So it's your typical Sunday football day. Got up as normal, brushed my teeth as normal, and then closed a deal for an F and Batman 66 LE. Say what? I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. So it's your typical Sunday football day. Got up as normal, brushed my teeth as normal, and then closed a deal for an F and Batman 66 LE. Say what? Holy shit, that road's still closed. I gotta go around. That did, I wish they'd make up their mind. Open, closed, open, closed. Anyway, so that is happening. WTF. I saw Michael Hanley posted a Batman 66 LE on the Ontario Facebook group. Got my mind spinning, so I was talking with him about the possibilities. And then I remembered that good old buddy old pal Ben Benedict, right here in London, Ontario, has a Batman 66 that is not for sale, but <clears throat> Ben's the kind of guy, if you give him the right number, he may think twice. And think twice he did because moments ago we just closed a deal. So, yeah, not your typical Sunday after all. I'm going to buy a Batman 66 LE. So, in other news, it's been a pretty epic Sunday. Kevin just got back from Milton, Ontario, visited our buddy Adam Hewer, who was trying to wheel and deal and trade slash sell his Elvira House of Horrors, which I mentioned something about that in a previous video. And uh, he wanted my white water, but I didn't really want to sell it or trade it. But Kevin ended up trading him a World Cup soccer and a party zone for the Elvira House of Horrors. And Kevin just got back with that like half an hour ago. And now he's going to go meet me over at Ben's to help with the Batman 66. Like this is the craziest pinball day. There's been a lot of crazy pinball days, but this is up there in the top 10 for sure. So that's what's going on today. Um, that was unexpected, but today is a good friggin' pinball day. I'll see you over at Ben's. I don't know if he wants me to be filming in the VIP room, as he calls it, where he puts all his uh, keepers, but maybe he'll let me do a little tiny something something. So we'll see. Either way, there's going to be a Batman 66 right there very shortly. Good All right, we made it. Kevin is here, Ben is here, and before we go down into the VIP room, there's just so much cool stuff going on in here. There is every time I'm here. So we had to do just a quick little tour of the action. So you got this cool pitching bat here. What year is this guy? 55, I believe. Like, look at this monstrosity. Yeah, that is huge. 56, something like that. You think moving pinball machines is a pain. This is a, on a whole nother level. She's a beast. <laughs> I guess so. But there's even bigger beasts and lurking in the background. Okay, we got this Royal Flush. This is going to go in the uh, auction, right? Right. And the wizard? Was that the other one? Or? Uh, eight ball. Oh, okay. So if you want to buy a Royal Flush or a Bally 8 ball, there's an auction coming up. Yeah. Where's it? Uh, what's the date on that? Miller. Miller and Miller? Yeah. It's like March. Sometime in March, so keep your eye out for that. But this is the monstrosity of them all. You said this is like the Cadillac of pitching bats? Yeah. It's, it's cool. It's got the three different levels. All right, it's it. it's, uh... super cool. Oh, yeah, the three levels back here. Yeah. Lower deck, center deck, upper deck. Yeah. And then your home run here. Wow. Yeah, it's cool. This is incredible. Very nice shape for, for the age of the machine. The back glass, is that repro? Because yeah, it looks. It's a repro, yeah. I was going to say, that's too minty to. Yeah. It's just cool yeah, stuff everywhere yeah, you very look. Nice machine. Wow. And then, just check out. Oh, the Canada Dry made its way out of the VIP room. Yeah, yeah. You don't see that. I, I did a tour of Ben's before. You can check it out if you want. Just search Ben Tour or something on my channel if you want to see more of the Canada Dry action. And then this. Oh, this is the shooter gallery that Kevin did up. That was fun. I really enjoyed trying to shoot Kevin and Corey with that thing. 
There's the eight ball. That is pretty nice looking cabinet, actually. It's one of the nicer ones I've seen. What's the deal with this candy machine? This is freaking cool. It's a stoner six pole uh, candy machine from the 50s, uh, I believe. It's in pretty good condition. So for you the, like to the deal in machine, everything, so eh? I just got to put a Steve's work inside and put a lock on it, which I got. So, uh, yeah. A little bit of everything. There. Yeah, man. There's this old vintage yeah. sit down driving it's a game. <laughs> It is a montage of effing awesomeness. Yeah. The 10 strike bowler. I remember this one from last time. Or oh, this is a different one or this same is one? 10 strike, yeah. Okay. Turn to aim. Williams 10 strike. Huh. That's a hard so machine. So friggin' to find, cool. That one. I can imagine. And then Love all that. the awesome signage too. Like that is one of the coolest Pepsi Cola signs I've ever the seen. Garage on the street. Yeah, yeah, in friggin' southwestern Ontario, maybe. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Holy poop. All right, well, so we got some uh, business to attend to now. We made it into the oh, VIP oh, room. Elvira. What are you going to do with the Elvira? <laughs> <laughs> Ben's already trying to work on the Elvira. <laughs> Here's the Batman 66 LE, number 34, Batman makes the scenes. Oh, we got some, like, cobweb, spider webs on the topper, so that's, like, apt to the theme, isn't it, kind of? But, yeah, so this is the Indiana Jones that potentially one day belongs to Kevin. But Ben just dropped the, some big money on a color DMD for this thing. The legit one. The $900 ship to Canada one. So, it's worth every penny. it is absolutely is the best mod in pinball. And then we've got the Rolling Stones LE number. What is that? 109 of 350. That is pretty cool. Check that out. Holy tongueage. Has this got these weird ball saves? Yeah, it does. See that little white dot there? That's for this secondary flipper button. Pops up, saves the ball in the out lane. Same thing on this side. But if you hit both buttons, the center post comes up. That's some sort of European thing to get around the laws of gambling and whatnot. So if you're good with your flipper skills, multitasking, you can almost never lose the ball on that thing. And then Dirty Harry. How much do you want for the Dirty Harry? It looks like it's got some black powder coated. Oh, Ben's counting. We gotta not distract him. Color DMD. Black powder coating. Very nice play field. Oh. LCD. Yeah, is it LCD? Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, it is. It's got it on the, uh, that setting where everything's blended in. No dots, my favorite setting. But this is uh, what we're here for. The LE. Ben, you bought this. Brand new in the box, right? Sorry, I'm distracting you again. I'll let him count. There's a lot of cash to be counted. <laughs> Art blades, topper, cool little bat signal thing there. Red wire form. That's cool. And with the speckled armor with the bat wings kind of thing. Ben might want to keep this uh, cup holder. And then, what about goodie bag? Is that in here? We've got the coin box actually locked in place there. Okay, I gotta be careful and not short anything out as I'm doing this. Kevin, <laughs> I need help before I short something out. Thank you. What do we got, what do we got? Oh, the tilt bob. Ben don't need no tilt bob. Shaker motor, oh, that's cool. Uh, it must be factory, but. Is it? Harry, $8, okay, cool. Thank you. Rolling Stones bought it brand new in the box. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Do you have a number on this guy? Just out of curiosity? Uh, it's on the front there, Mike. Oh. Uh, no, I mean like a price I mean a price tag. Oh. If you want a dirty Harry, 8500 bucks, colored into. 
Okay. Okay. All right. But you bought Batman brand new in box too? The which? The Batman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I can't imagine you putting up thousands of games on this thing. Okay, well, that is cool. Eh? All right, I guess we're going to pack up this machine and bring it home. All right, here's all the goodies. Ah, there it is, the authentication certificate signed by Gary Stern himself. Episode 34 of 120. That's handwritten in there, too. It looks like that's pretty yeah. cool. And uh, there she is, cool. all folded up, ready to go. I like it. Thank you, sir. You're quite welcome. <laughs> See this bad boy leave. Yeah, it's going to a good home. It's going to a good and home. And I'm going to play the crap out of it. <laughs> this uh, is pretty, one of the coolest friggin' signs you know, the war ended ever. Like so. Coca Cola 1942. The thing is yeah, four by sign. eight feet. You know? This thing is insane. We almost lost Kev. There he is. Yeah, All right, we found him. <laughs> Put a uh, creature in Batman's place. This is the one that Kevin restored. Let's see what your new lineup now looks like with Creature in it. There you go. Looking good. It is looking good. Okay, well, I paid significantly more for this pinball machine than I did for the car that it is in. All right, the Eagle has landed. What do you think, honey? I paid more for this than my car. You like? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> All right, it's Batman time. It's in. <laughs> Same as out. Hey, yeah. <laughs> okay, before I set this bad boy up, I thought I would uh, just kind of go over a couple few details here for fun. This machine came out 2016, December. This one that I have was built in January of 2017, so pretty early, especially considering it's number 34 of 240. But yeah, so they made. Of the LEs, they made 240 units, but they were in like two batches. So the first series of 120 games, uh, each game in the first series will be named for one of the 120 episodes of the television show. Uh, I forgot what mine's called. And then each game in the second series will be named for one of the iconic bat gadgets used in the series. So... Bat gadget would be pretty cool, but so I'm guessing, yeah, it runs from 1 to 240, and depending on if it's before or after 120, whether it'll be named for a TV show or a bat gadget. And also, each game came with a certificate of authenticity, authenticity signed by Gary Stern himself. Oh, and Gore, uh, George Gomez under the hard coat finish. Oh, I'll have to look for that. Uh, this says, these are some add-ons, but I feel like, you know, the topper came with it, side armor came with it, art blades came with it, so maybe the LEs came with all this stuff. But where did it say? Somewhere. All purchasers who make a deposit on their game will receive a VIP invitation to an exclusive meet and greet with um, Batman himself, Adam West, at the Weston Chicago North Shore Hotel in Wheeling, Illinois. During the weekend of Chicago Pinball Expo 2016, I can't remember if that actually happened or if Adam West passed away before that, but that's actually pretty darn cool that that um, option was offered, but... I just don't recall if that ever happened or not. So we got design by Gomez, art by Franchi, sound by Jerry Thompson, and software by the late Lyman F. Sheets Jr. So this is all very cool stuff. And in terms of what the, they did with the Batman, there was so many premiums. 
240 LEs, and then there was the super limited edition where they announced initially that they're going to make like 30, um, but then they added in another 50 due to demand. So they ran 80 units in total for the super LE, which had a customized call out that had your name on it from Adam West that programmed into the machine. So that was pretty cool. Uh, also the invite, the Adam West signature, and the Super LE seems cheap nowadays, doesn't it? 15,000 US, you know? Back then it was like the most expensive pinball machine probably ever offered. Um, now I wonder, I doubt it's gonna tell us how many premiums were made because Stern just doesn't do that. But yeah, the premium itself was 8,600 when it came out. All right, so that's some neat information about the game here. Let's have a look at this flyer if it actually loads up, you know? Yeah, really cool art package. Um, but that is the premium and not the LE. Let's take a quick peek at the LE flyer. And then it's time to bust open this bad boy once and for all. Yeah, sparkly bat winged armor oh it doesn't show the art blades in there hmm does show the topper and some dimensions kapow pinball all right featuring the art of christopher franchi okay i think it's time i'm gonna start by just kind of dusting off the topper and then um, throwing some legs on this guy all right, stuck her on the cart, busted out the Swiffer, got rid of all the dust on the back. Anyway, I gotta do the front. It was a little bit dusty back here too, but got little Swiffer remnants all over the place. Swiffer is not really the greatest tool for this actually. It just gets everywhere. So I don't think I'll use that again. So I left more Swiffer behind than I picked up friggin' dust. So anything back here? No. Okay, so two interesting things that I'm looking forward to investigating is how many plays on this thing and what code is it on? Yeah, you can see the dust I picked up floating around in the camera. But yeah, this Franchi artwork is pretty friggin' cool. I'm gonna pump this up, put the head up, pump it up into my ceiling. You know, I got this extra eight inches of topper that uh, hopefully it will fit up there. Oh yeah, and on a side note, I didn't even play a freaking game when I was at Ben's. So, I mean, it looked like it booted up okay, so hopefully there's no node board issues. And hopefully the turntable works as it should. And really, I kind of such just glanced over this thing. Oh yeah, and I missed one ball too. It went clanging and banging down there. Um, I never really just took a nice close look. Look at this. You see any ball trails? If you're gonna see any ball trails, it's gonna be right in front of the flippers. There, there's a little bit. A smidge. How's the shooter lane? Mm, almost perfect. Gotham City, 14 miles. There's the crane ball. The penguin dude. Alright, this is uh, pretty friggin' cool. So, Here's the test to see if I can pump this topper into the ceiling and still have room to put on the legs. All right, putting on the last leg here and check out how tight of a fit this was. I managed to just slip the back legs on. They're only raised up about an inch at most. And this is how tight we are to the ceiling.
I am almost touching it, but I don't think I am. So when I release the game, it'll give me an extra like quarter inch. So that was tight. And for whatever reason, this hasn't happened to me on any Stern game before in my life, but every single bolt that I tighten, listen, there's the sound of wood cracking or something. Here we go again. What is that? And why is that? I'm sure it's fine, but that's a thing, I guess. All right, almost there. Let's slowly lower this guy. Make sure that the face of the machine isn't gonna hit my floor joist here. I may have to shove it back. Yeah. Let's see if I can push the whole thing back right now. Oh, not quite. It's on the back legs too much. Okay, I'm gonna need uh, my other hand for this. All right, Batman is officially on legs. I've leveled the machine. I don't know to what degree the pitch is. I kind of want to put on rubber feet on the front so we can't slide this machine around like crazy, which I am going to be very guilty of doing. Otherwise, I've got a tilt bob to install. And then the coin box with all the goodies. Kind of have a look here and see if there's anything going on. Does not look like it. It was where the goodie bag was. And... Uh, oh, the toilet paper roll here. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say is, is there any gold dust? Which would mean my coil stops need to be changed, which probably should be regardless because stern coil stops are not good. A little remnants of some spillage there. Maybe that's actually maybe clear coat or beer coat, not really sure. Um, but yeah, I've got a bunch more clearance now that everything's kind of situated. That is like two or even three finger widths. So I could jack this guy up a little bit if needed to make it faster. So I'll be back. All right, we should go through all this paraphernalia. It was in the goodie bag before uh, I turn on the machine. This is cool, some extra target decals. And this cute little Batman keychain plastic, that is going up somewhere. But yeah, we got all these guys. Don't think I'll need those, but good to have. And then got this envelope that says flyer. So I think we can all guess what that is. Let's see, here we go. That shows the premium model. Pretty cool. And what else do we got? We got some free t-shirt offer. Wonder if that's still uh, applicable for the 30th anniversary of Stern. Email proof of purchase and get a free t-shirt. Uh, this game came out, what, seven, eight years ago? So I have a feeling that's not gonna be uh, applicable anymore, but this is actually a pretty cool poster here. I might have to hang that guy up somewhere. Oh, and then Here's another flyer. Batman Classic TV Series. What is this? In order to keep your bat equipment up to date, the Dynamic Duo will send you regular enhancements, power-ups, features, and code updates. Please send Commissioner Gordon the following information. Okay, well, that's cool. And then here we have the Gary Stern signed Certificate of Authenticity, number 34 of 120. And the name of my machine is something like, oh, I just read it five minutes ago. Batman does the scene of the crimes or something weird like that. It's not very memorable, obviously. 
There's node board information. Hopefully I don't ever need to use that. And what do we got here? IFPA, earn more money with pinball. Some generic IFPA photocopies. Just like pinball basics and whatnot for the shop. Okay, interesting. Ooh, and there's something else in here, a little thicker. Ooh, they actually made a manual for this that's not online. That's cool. All right, so that pretty much covers everything that's in there. Found this screw in the box, so might have to find out where he belongs. Some extra sort of cable that seems to come with newer sterns. It's the original balls. If there's only like 100 or 200 plays, then they may not need to be changed. Um, all right, I will be back. All right, my Batman keychain plastic is installed. As well as the coin box, tilt bob, stuck in all the goodie stuff. Now it's time to turn this guy on. All right, here goes nothing. Let's see what code we're on, first of all. Let's see, I'm gonna guess like 0.63 or something early. I don't even know if that's a real code, but I bet it's a, like original 0.61. Updating node board runtime. I overestimated the code. It's actually earlier than 0.63. So I saw this pop up when at Ben's, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. Okay. Toppers doing its thing up there. You'll still be able to see the effect a little bit, but not amazingly. C W C B R U R I K. Okay, so here is the thing I've been wanting to find out here is audits, game audits, standard audits, total balls played. Uh, next, hello. Total extra balls. Replays. Okay, maybe there's more games on here than I thought. This should be coming up soon. Total free play. Total plays, 850. Okay, there we go. And then, does it have a lifetime plays? No, okay. So 850 plays, that's pretty darn good for, uh, you know, being what? 18, 19, 20, four, like this was produced in the beginning of 2017. So all of 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 22 24, eight years. It's crazy. hundred games a year, basically. So that's what I'm working with. So the first thing I'm going to do is update the code. But before we do that, let's take a closer look here. The Adam West signature. And I don't think I panned over this machine with the glass off, so this will be a better view. I love the red wire form. It's like got some metallic in it. The art blades are sweet. Back panel, it's all art, arted up. Oh, the little TV there, right? That's going to show information and maybe scenes too. Like, I never really paid attention much to that when I did get to play this game. It's at Maple Pinball, so I play it there from time to time. Spinners look to be like decals in perfect shape. A little bit of black there, so you know, I'll give the play field a wipe down. The magnet looks to be good. This target, is that it kind of bent in a little bit? Ah, yeah. There we go. That was kind of... Maybe when the ball fell out uh, of the play field, when we lifted up, it landed right there and kind of smushed that target in. I bet you that's exactly what happened. Okay, good find there. 
But yeah, this thing is pretty. Um, should I turn it on officially or just update the code? Yeah, let's go. We gotta close the coin door to make that happen, I think. Here we go. Okay, you can see some dimples on the play field, but I'm not concerned about that. I just didn't notice them before, but this pinball steel ball smashing around play field made of wood, it happens. So I don't concern myself with them. Okay. That bat signal is pretty cool. Does the topper like shine a light at some point and cast a bat signal on the ceiling? Is that a thing? I thought I remember hearing about that. I know my buddy Daryl has one, and I saw a bat signal on his ceiling, but I don't know if that was aftermarket or a mod or what, but there's the shooter lane. It's usually where the most wear is visible. And you can see there is not much. Yeah, these stern flipper rubbers do that. That happened on... Um, what was it? I can't remember, on another machine, same kind of thing. But I will probably change those out to something a little more colorful and fun. I think I might spend a couple bucks on this guy and mod it out a little bit. Like, I could afford to put in some cool colored rubbers, and maybe a custom shooter rod. But yeah, I think uh, it'd be cool to do this up just a smidge. I mean, I already spent quite a bit on it, but I think this machine deserves a couple minor tweaks. So I'm going to update this guy now. All right, the first USB stick that I tried didn't seem to want to register. So I tried a different one, and sure enough, it worked. And we're going from 0.61 code to 1.12, which is 5.5 gigs worth of new information. So here goes nothing. I might be here for a while. Okay, well, waiting for code, I stuck on some purple flipper rubbers and clear out lane rubbers for the posts. But I've been stuck on the screen for like 20 minutes and I don't think that is a good thing. So I don't know what the F happened, but I've been waiting it out and posted on Pinball Repair Help Group. But I haven't gotten any replies yet. And it's been like this for 20 minutes to half an hour now. And I don't think uh, that's normal. I mean, I haven't done an update that was over five gigs before. So I just thought I would wait it out. But I don't know. I think uh, something's broken here. What does that LED say? Eh. Uh, I can't really see, but I may have to, I don't know, I may just brick the whole system if I unplug the USB stick or turn off the machine, but I don't know what else to do. All right, we have success. Uh, it was a little unnerving, but since I was locked on that last screen, I not much I could do. I turned off the machine, unplugged the USB, plugged it back in, turned it back on, and it seemed to kind of behave a little bit differently in the options it gave me for updating, and it looks like it worked this time. So, remove USB stick and power cycle game. So, turn that off for a couple seconds here, and hopefully it shows 1.12 code and it actually boots up. And then, maybe even actually get to play this thing. I swear, I've been down in the basement for a couple hours working on this. And it looks pretty promising. I 
I think the five point, there it is, version 1.12, all right. Look at that. Complete with the Stern commercials. All right, I like this. Uh, I don't have Insider connected on this. That would be something interesting and worth looking into. But I'll let this do its thing for a minute and I will be back. Okay, there you have it. Machine is set up, leveled, got my pin gulp, got the code updated, new flipper rubbers, outlane post rubbers, playfield cleaned, cleaned the blue rubber posts, and now all that's left is to play. Oh yeah. All right, half a ball in, and I found out where that screw came from. I went up this cat ramp, and the plastic started bouncing around, so... Found a home for that screw.